everyone. Welcome. My name is Angie Edmonds. I'm an interpreter for California State Parks. I see some people tuning in. Thanks for being here. It's been a while since I've been live. I'm excited to be back for this week. You might have noticed we've started alternating between live videos and other shared content on our pages. So be sure to stay tuned. This week I am live and I'm happy to be here. Thanks everybody for tuning in. I am today at the beautiful Patrick's Point State Park, which is one of my favorite places in our North Coast Redwoods district. Um, I, this park is on the ancestral, ancestral territory of the Yurok people. And many of you tune in to our Sumeg Village programs, so keep that up. Again, I'm Angie, and um, I have been doing a series on our social media pages about oceans and climate. So I've been spending a lot of time learning about our climate and learning about um, how to teach all of you about it as well. So before we dive into that, I'll give you a quick view of this park. So you can see behind me, huge body of water that you might recognize as the Pacific Ocean. Um, I don't have a tripod today. We're having a tripod shortage. Lots of interpreters needed them today. So I'm doing everything by hand and I am in the park. So you might hear some cars and people, but stick with me. Alrighty. So welcome everyone. Thanks for being here. I'm Angie. And today at Patrick's Point State Park, it's a pretty comfortable temperature for a November afternoon. And it's about 52 degrees Fahrenheit, um, a little colder than the average temperature of planet Earth, which is about 59 degrees Fahrenheit, the average. Um, and Earth is able to maintain some pretty comfortable temperatures for us humans to enjoy. And of course, we're not the only uh, things that enjoy that, those moderate temperatures. And Earth has this pretty unique ability um, to do something that not many other planets or any other that we know of can do in our solar system. So what is that unique characteristic that Earth has or that special skill that Earth can do that no other planets that we know of in our solar system can do? Go ahead and type it in the comments. What makes Earth so special? Hmm. Somebody knows out there. The beauty of lives is that I get to actually talk to all of you. So I'll give you a moment to type in. Anyone? Come on, don't be shy. Okay, my friends. Well, in case you missed the memo, Earth has the ability to possess life. So look at all this greenery behind me. Look at me, a living animal right in front of you. Earth hosts life. And our Earth is the only planet in the universe, as far as we know, that has this ability. And that is because of this nice comfortable temperature, average of 59 degrees Fahrenheit, that life is able to exist on planet Earth. Oh, I see more people. Yes, Ashley Wemp said it can support life. Thank you. Thanks, Ashley. Hi. Yes, life. Beautiful green, blue life. Um, also water is linked to that. Somebody said water. Thanks, Connie. Um, and we are able to maintain this comfortable temperature on planet Earth because of our atmosphere. 
and um, not just our atmosphere, but also the unique placement of our atmosphere in or of our planet in the solar system. And um, our atmosphere contains some gases that are sort of like a blanket that covers planet Earth. And this blanket of gases is, of course, called our atmosphere. And planet Earth is not the only planet that has an atmosphere. So let's talk about that for a moment. <laughs> so this blanket of gases that makes up our atmosphere is sort of like a greenhouse. So we use greenhouses to help us um, bring life, to help us foster life in plants, right? If you live in a cold place and you like to have a garden, you're probably familiar with this idea. A greenhouse helps to facilitate the needs that plants have in order to grow and survive, right? Light, warmth, water, um, heat. So um, our planet, is a lot like a greenhouse because of our atmosphere. So I have a picture of an app or of a <laughs> an atmosphere, a greenhouse here. Um, and you can see in this picture, it's probably pretty cold outside because it's snowing and there's a snowman or snow woman or snow person. And of course, what the greenhouse does with its glass walls and glass roof is that uh, light, sunlight is able to pass through the glass, but then the heat that's created actually gets trapped in the little glass house. Makes it nice and warm for the baby plant starts for your garden. Greenhouse. Maybe you have one, maybe you've used one, but I'm sure you can picture one if you haven't. Alrighty. So what the greenhouse does is uses the sun's energy during the day and then eventually the sun goes down and the glass walls and glass roof help to trap that heat inside even when there's no direct sunlight for those plants to benefit from. So that's a lot like our atmosphere and what it does for the planet. So let's take a look at some of the plants in our solar system. I'll try and tip this down for you. Down here on the bottom, of course, you can see the sun. And then I want to talk about three different planets that have atmospheres and how they are different. You can see Mercury here. I put it there because it's the closest planet to the sun. Um, but then we have Venus and then Earth and then Mars. All these three planets have atmospheres. And you can see they are sorted in their distance from the sun. So Venus here is close to the sun. And it has an incredibly dense atmosphere. And inside of that atmosphere, there is a lot of greenhouse gases, particularly carbon dioxide, about 96% carbon dioxide. And the effect of that dense atmosphere and those greenhouse gases is a very intense greenhouse effect, or what's called the greenhouse effect making the, the temperature on Venus about 863.6 degrees Fahrenheit, which is incredibly hot. It's hot enough to melt lead. So Venus is an incredibly hot planet. It has a whole lot of that greenhouse effect. Then we have planet Earth, where all of us live, the blue planet, the green planet. And our atmosphere is a medium density we have a medium, best word I could find to describe it, um, level of greenhouse gases. I'll talk about those in just a moment. And therefore, we have a medium effect of that greenhouse effect, how much of that heat gets uh, trapped within our atmosphere so we don't lose all of the heat that the Earth collected uh, when the sun goes down. And that keeps our planet an average of about 59 degrees Fahrenheit, average. If we did not have our atmosphere with that moderate level of greenhouse gases, um, our planet would be about negative 0.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Incredibly cold. Um, and then we have Mars, which has a very thin atmosphere. 
and has very limited greenhouse gases and doesn't have a very strong greenhouse gas effect, making Mars very cold. Um, basics of atmospheres and greenhouse effect. All right. Any questions about that? Let's see. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, so our atmosphere is sort of like a blanket made up of these different gases called greenhouse gases. Whoops, let me get you set up again. And these greenhouse gases help us to maintain some of that heat from the sun, even when it's dark outside. So I want everybody to imagine, uh, maybe you've been to a really warm climate before on a really hot day. And if you imagine putting your hand against um, some black asphalt in the midday sun, you'll know that that black asphalt has absorbed a lot of that heat from the sun. But then if you were go to go to back to that same place in the evening when um, the sun has been down for a while and you touch that asphalt, it would be nice and cool. So basically what that tells us is after the sun goes down in a particular um, region of the planet, the earth starts to lose some of the heat that it's collected throughout the day. And a lot of that heat gets trapped inside of our atmosphere, which maintains that comfortable temperature for us to live. Both humans, plants, animals, pretty beautiful thing. So when I think of these three planets with their three different atmospheres, planet Earth is sort of like the Goldilocks zone. It's not too cold, it's not too hot, it's the perfect distance away from the sun. Pretty incredible, we're so lucky that planet Earth exists and that we have this perfect atmosphere to help us maintain the perfect temperature. Now, greenhouse gases, some examples are carbon dioxide and methane and even water vapor. Um, are these naturally occurring things or are these man-made things or human-made things? You can type in the chat what you think. Well, if you're thinking both, you're right. Greenhouse gases are naturally occurring. We have them on all of these planets that we just talked about. And there is a certain level of greenhouse gases that is natural um, for our planet Earth to have. So let's flip the board over. Decided to get artsy today. Let's see if you can see that. Up here we have the sun again. And of course we have planet Earth, the nice big blue ocean. And around it I've drawn our atmosphere. And inside of our atmosphere you can see some little dots. And these represent um, the regular level of greenhouse gases that are kind of contributing to the blanket of our atmosphere that helps keep the planet at a comfortable temperature. So greenhouse gases are normal. They're actually the reason, the perfect balance of them that we have is the reason why we're allowed, or not allowed, but able to survive on planet Earth. Pretty amazing. But basically what has happened over the last about 200 years is that we have started to create and expel what's called rampant carbon dioxide. And the definition of the word rampant is flourishing or spreading unchecked. Now, I'm sure many of you know that greenhouse gases, um, specifically carbon dioxide, is released into the atmosphere when we burn fossil fuels like coal, natural gas, and oil. So throughout the last 200 years, we've been burning a whole lot of those fossil fuels, which is releasing rampant carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So what that essentially looks like is a lot more of these dots in our atmosphere. Boop, 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 boop. And remember, 
I could keep drawing dots. Dots, 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 dots. Our atmosphere is like a heat trapping blanket around the planet. And the more greenhouse gases that we add to our atmosphere, we're basically thickening the blanket. So maybe think of like a light summer blanket that you would use um, to maybe just keep yourself a little cozy versus a thick down comforter. So what we've created is a thick down comforter, a thick heat trapping blanket that's around our planet that's causing uh, quite a few issues. And we're going to explore those more in the coming weeks. Um, but what we know, well, I guess you might be curious, but how do we know that there's more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere than ever before? Um, NASA has satellites that are actually measuring how much carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere all the time. And we can actually pretty um, confidently predict what the atmosphere was like 800,000 years ago using ice core samples from places like Greenland and Antarctica. And we can get a sense of how much carbon dioxide was in the atmosphere 800,000 years ago, which is pretty incredible. You might not think that we can see back that far, but we can. Um, and it's important for me to also mention that the levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere do fluctuate. And um, that's a part of this conversation as well. Actually, um, we know that carbon dioxide levels actually decrease slightly in the winter because, of course, it's colder and plants are saving their energy and not photosynthesizing as much. Of course, photosynthesis takes carbon dioxide uh, out of the atmosphere and creates oxygen. So we have um, less photosynthesis happening in the winter and more in the summer, which contributes to the level of carbon dioxide. Um, but again, remember regular versus rampant carbon dioxide. Um, and we see spikes and valleys in the levels of carbon dioxide um, from the charts, which I'll post below, about every 100,000 years about. But the spike that we are in right now is incredibly higher than any other spike that we have recorded from those ice core samples back 800,000 years. So we are in a phase of rampant carbon dioxide, rampant um, quick thickening of this heat trapping blanket of our atmosphere around planet Earth. And this increased heat causes some problems um, that we'll talk about and I've posted about a couple weeks ago, especially related to the heat capacity of water. And also excess carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has some significant impacts on both our land and our oceans. Now, for those of you who know me, you know that um, I talk mostly about marine environments. So we will be looking at some of these issues through the lens of the ocean. So if you haven't seen the posts that I've done the past couple of weeks, uh, please go check those out. They're a great kind of starting place. Uh, next week, we're going to be talking about what happens to water when it gets warmer. And the following week, we'll be talking about what happens to the oceans and to water when there's excess carbon dioxide. Essentially, water helps to absorb carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. Without the ocean, um, our carbon dioxide situation would be much worse than it is right now. So thanks to the ocean for helping us absorb some of that extra. But it does come at a cost that basically the chemistry of the oceans is changing because the oceans are working so hard to absorb excess carbon dioxide. So we'll be talking about ocean acidification in a couple weeks as well. So thanks everybody for tuning in. I hope this helped you to get a better understanding of how our atmosphere um, is like a blanket wrapped around the planet. And when we expel excess carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, that blanket gets thicker and thicker and thicker. And in the coming weeks, we'll explore what that means for life on Earth. So I hope everybody has a chance to connect with all the life 
that we have on this beautiful planet thanks to our perfect Goldilocks zone of our placement in the solar system and our, our atmosphere. Remember, these parks are your parks, so come visit them. Remember to breathe deeply and, uh, oh, really important point. What can we do about rampant carbon dioxide and the thickening of that blanket, heat trapping blanket? I'll tell you right now. We need to stop using fossil fuels as soon as possible. And there's a couple ways that you can help us as a human organism move away from our reliance on fossil fuels. You can do things as an individual, like ride your bike to work or to school, or um, maybe get a more fuel efficient car, get an electric car, put solar panels on your house, all these things that you've probably heard of. But something even more profound and more powerful is that you can engage in community actions, like, for example, advocating for better public transportation in your community, advocating um, for more bike lanes in your community so more people can safely ride their bikes to work and to school. Um, so changing your community, shifting your community towards um, one that doesn't have to rely on fossil fuels as much is an incredibly powerful thing that we can all do to help us reduce the thickness of this heat trapping blanket around our planet and um, help to protect our oceans and this beautiful place that we live. So I hope that was informative and fun. Thank you everybody for tuning in. And if you have any questions, suggestions, critiques, ideas, please post them in the comments. Share this video if you enjoyed it. And uh, feel free to replicate these drawings, replicate this video, spread this information as much as you can. Thanks everybody. Um, somebody asked, is there a regular schedule? I will be doing a post every Thursday. It's not always going to be a live video, um, but please stay tuned on our Facebook page. Over the last two weeks, I've done just Facebook posts on our page. So please check those out. I'll also link them in the comments so you can see them. Um, but yes, every Thursday there will be a post as a part of our oceans and climate uh, collective learning that we're all doing. So thanks everybody so much. Have a great Thursday. Be well, take good care. See you next time.